welcome to this conversation brought to you by White House Custom Color. I'm Jed Toffer, and today I'm at the Portrait Masters 2018 outside of Phoenix, Arizona, sitting with Sally Sargood of Animoto. How's it going? It's going well. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, With you and me today, we've known each other for a while. I don't even remember when we met. I don't either. Probably a decade or so <laughs> yeah. ago. And here we are at, at essentially S- Sue Bryce's convention. Is that fair to say? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and you introduced me to her. I don't remember that. I know but. you don't. You said that last <laughs> night, but I want to. I want to. I want to tell you a little bit more and see if you if it jogs your memory a little bit. We were at WPPI. I don't know what year it was, oh nine or ten maybe. Mm-hmm. And we were sitting in that bar at the base of the signature tower, mm-hmm. where people like hung out before we would go out for dinner and stuff yeah. usually uh-huh. so it's like seven maybe and you and me are sitting on like a like a bench or at the side of the room and it's packed full and you know there's jerry guionis over there and there's dane sanders over there and everybody's talking and hanging out before we go out and you said to me hey do you know sue bryce i said i do not and she was sitting right on the other side of you and uh-huh. you introduced me to her and then you you leaned over to me and you said She's going to explode. <laughs> did I really? You did. You did. I I knew what she had inside her. Well, I, I think, and I think that was the year yeah, it's, that yeah. she looked like Adele with all her awards. You know, uh, like yes. <laughs> she needed like you do remember people that? to help her with yes. all of her, with everything that she wanted. I think wanted. she booked an extra seat on the plane just to take her all her awards home. <laughs> she might. She might have, but you you told me that, and it was you told me that like the night before, and, yeah. and I didn't, I was like, okay, yeah. I don't, you know, because I don't know. Yeah, I, I certainly didn't know, and I was just like, all right, and then yeah, it was like you knew. Well, I was privy with Sue. Sue moved over to Australia, and I was one of the first few people that she met, mm. and I knew she'd come over because she had a studio that she believed in so much in New Zealand. Yeah, and. She had got to the point where she felt she needed to share what she was doing there with mm. other photographers. Mm-hmm. And so she came over to Australia and, you know, she literally came over with that concertina card that she does and she was showing us all of her work. And then, you know, she she dived further and further into how she operated her studio and how she wanted to share that and being being privy to that and understanding what she was doing and how she could teach it, I, I, I mean, it was obvious that this was not going to be something small. <laughs> well, it wasn't hard for you to get a sense of her talent and her abilities, in part because you've you've been in the industry for a while yourself. Mm-hmm. How how long? When did you start? How oh, did you get in? All my life. So Your I was whole life. I was literally um, in Australia when when you're 16 in high school, which is like year 10 for us. Right. Um, we do what's called work experience. Uh, they really start to guide you through career choice early in school in um, in Australia. So at 16, they ask you what you want to be when you grow up. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to be a photographer. Is that right? That's another story. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Princess Diana is behind me wanting to be a photographer. Um, but I chose photography. And what I wanted to do was work for a newspaper. Mm-hmm. And they put me in a wedding portrait studio and I was so disappointed. Really? I was just like, oh my God, this is so boring. I wanted to be at the newspaper as a photographer. Right. Uh, but after a week of working in this studio, I grew to love it and I continued to work part time okay. as a 16 year old on the weekends. I was assisting weddings. I was assisting in the studio. Mm. And then I wanted to be a retoucher because mm-hmm. this is back in the day when it was paintbrush I was going to say, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, I, we obviously used a professional lab and the lab we used was very similar to White House Custom Color. Mm-hmm. To me, I call them the White House of, um, of Australia. Right. And uh, so we... They actually said to me, if you want to be a retoucher, you need to work at the lab. And they sent me down. I finished high school and I had an interview at a university and an interview at the lab. And I, the lab was first and I got in the car with mum and dad and I said, I don't want to go to university. I want to work. So you didn't even go? I didn't go. How did they react to that? Well, it's not as big a deal in Australia <laughs> as it is here. Okay. College is not a thing. Right. right. I think college in Australia is our last two years of high school. Mm. I think it's very similar. I see. Um, so, yeah, I started working in the lab and then I started seeing the great work coming through from mm. professional photographers mm-hmm. and I'd pick out the ones whose work I liked most. I went and asked them if I could assist for them. So I was literally... I was 17 turning 18 when I started working in that lab. 
Right. So you, it, wasn't, it wasn't a stretch for you <laughs> when you saw Sue. No. To be able to be like, yep, she's got it going on. Yeah. It was, and it wasn't just Sue, like it wasn't, yeah, you've got a great studio. I see that a lot in people. Right. It was when she started to tell me how she put the studio together and the way that she ran it and that's what she wanted to share with people and that's what she's doing now. Mm -hmm. And it was when I really heard her story uh, and I was helping her. I think at the time I got to a point where I was consulting and I helped her with some of the stuff that she was originally planning for the website. Right. And this is 2010. Right. And um, it the minute I read her story and what she could teach others, I, I just knew that this had right. to be shared. Right. And to see it now eventuate is just, you she, know. She's doing all right. Yeah, yeah she, she's, she's doing good. I think, <laughs> you did good, I think she's going to explode is, a, is an understatement now. It's like a I supernova. I can't believe I said that. <laughs> you did. She's going to explode. I'll never forget it. Those were your words. Yeah. And you were absolutely right. It was It was, It was. was. One hundred percent prophetic, and it pretty much started within twenty four hours well, of you saying that to me. Yeah, and and she did that class um, at WPPI, and from that WPPI, she went straight to Creative Live. And then, yeah, and and that was when I, you know, it was visible. Right. Uh, the explosion became visible. When everybody saw it. Well, yeah, I think she went into Seattle with, you know, her Facebook page. I think she had. 3,000 people following her yeah. and Creative Live started and suddenly she had to start a new page because right. she'd hit the 5,000 right. mark Immediately. and by the end of those two days she was at 10,000 yeah. and suddenly you know so many people you know just they saw what what made me say she's going to explode well, because do, she yeah. did have so much content to offer and so oh, much yeah. so much to learn from her it's incredible well I didn't even know that night that she had been in the business for 20 years too yeah you know, you never know yeah. about people these days. There's lots of people giving workshops that have picked up a camera last summer. Yeah, <laughs> you totally. know what I mean? But I think you, the other thing is, too, she not only had the goods, like she'd, she'd built the studio. Right. She knew how to shoot. She knew how to pose and light and everything. Right. But there's something else to it. You know, she she has that, that realness to her mm -hmm. and that vulnerability. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, so much confidence and that you can look up to and admire right and i think all of that resonates with the people who listen to her and learn from her and that sort of stuff so it's evident here you can you yeah. can see it on people's faces yeah um well, how did all of that lead you in a nutshell to really dive into video marketing and using social media at animoto like that's a jump yes but that's that's where you've been for a while and what and really what you're focusing yes. on. Yes. So I mentioned that I was consulting and um, when I started my consulting business, I the intention was to work with photographers. But as I got into that, I also had vendors come to me and say, Can you help us with our marketing right. and things? Right. One of those vendors was Animoto. Mm -hmm. And uh, they came to me not with a small project, they said, We want you to come and, you know, contract with us. And at the time, I couldn't really leave Australia, and so I started with them part-time, just sort of 20 hours a week remotely, so right. from Australia working with the office right. in New York, which wasn't easy. Right. But I loved the company. I loved the product. Even working with Jerry for so long, you know, Jerry was kind of the king of slideshows. Mm -hmm. So I had that background that I could bring into the business, but Animoto wanted me to come in just to share the knowledge that I had of the industry and be the voice of the photographer mm -hmm. at Animoto. So... Um, that that began and then you know i was able to come out to new york so i moved out and started full time like we fit i like right. animoto right. they like they like me right, right. <laughs> and you know new york was always my dream right. so uh but what i've really enjoyed at animoto is i started as this photography voice but you know and i kind of arrived i'm gonna say it in my early 40s sure wondering what else could i learn i'd been in the photography industry for so much for so long and i felt like i knew many aspects i've seen it gone from digital film to digital and all of these things evolve and i was kind of like what's next for me right. and then i come to this company that sort of is making this shift from slideshows into marketing videos right. which is also a shift from the sales and marketing that we knew as photographers into this new era of social media marketing so 
I found myself again at the forefront of this sort of new I say revolution, but this new way to market your business, not just as a photographer, but as a small business in general. So I very quickly got to see firsthand how the impact of using video on social media and video to market your business was mm. actually working. And I think, you know, a lot of it started with putting a video on your website. Right. Using a video, yeah, to, to actually like show your personality with video and not just photos. And um, to have seen that, you know, like I said, Facebook and then Instagram and we've seen, you know, Twitter and Pinterest and all of that sort of thing, Snapchat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but to, like I said, be at the kind of forefront of that and really seeing firsthand the results has been quite amazing and something that I've come to embrace and, and love and really believe in. Well, it's, it's fascinating to me when you when you think about it that video marketing is uh, has become a bigger and bigger deal in and of itself social media has essentially appeared and exploded in the last 10 years or so as well and the marriage of those two things mm. is is like a match made in heaven really and yeah. the beauty of it is now it's 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 the barrier to create a really nice video mm. is is getting smaller and smaller and smaller because mm -hmm. of companies like Animoto mm -hmm. and the the type of tech that you guys have on the backside. I don't even it, it blows my mind what you're able to do. Um, but you're but I remember what I read two or three years ago. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg said that oh in a, in a few years Facebook's going to be ninety percent video. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking really it's mm -hmm. it's on that sort of a trajectory and. That's essentially where we're where we're going, if not where we're at. Yeah, yeah, right? and I mean, he made that call, but he also had control of that. Well, <laughs> yeah, because he controls the algorithm, right? right. So True. when he makes that call, True. Good point. <laughs> you've got to jump on board. Yeah, right. When he says that, it's like, oh, this is going to happen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not a prediction; it's yeah. like he's, a declaration. He's like, you're either in or you're out. Yeah. You know, <laughs> then it's the whole thing is that Facebook algorithm. Yeah, you got to go with that. Right. You know? Right, and and that's where, especially for photographers, you know, photographers see the word video and they think of a videographer. Yes, they think of yeah. shooting video instead of creating a mm -hmm. marketing video, a slideshow video, even. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, a lot of our messaging has sort of been difficult to get that across. That to, that when we're saying make a marketing video, it doesn't mean get the video camera out mm -hmm. and and actually shoot a video clip. You can literally take three or four or six or seven photos and put them to music, put your logo on the end and, you know, add some text, which is now very important and we can get to that. But, and suddenly, you know, within five, 10 minutes, you've got a marketing video that really? you can put on social media. Honestly. And it's, it's not, it's nothing technical. And we've done many AB tests. We've tested a lot of things uh, and as do other companies that we work with. I think it was Buffer did a test recently and video on Facebook saw three times the engagement yep. as a photo yep. and twice the engagement as a link. And, you know, I, I think that's where if you want to get noticed more, you need to actually create these simple videos. Mm -hmm. And not only that, I mean, I'd rather people see six or seven of my photos than one. Right. You know, if you're actually advertising your business. Yeah. As opposed to just a still static image that someone's scrolling through. Yeah. The movement stops you yes. a lot. Yeah. Um, and then you're going to see more than just one image. Yes. And Facebook are going to put it in front of more people because it's a video. Right. Right. He made that clear. Yeah. Apparently. Yeah. Um, so what sort of advice do you have for people? Like, I know that you're trying to get people out of the videographer mindset. And I think that's happening. Yeah. I totally get what you're saying. And I, and, but I do think that that is happening more and more, that that association is essentially dissolving. Mm -hmm. um, but what, what sort of tips do you have for people um, that really want to uh, apply this to their business or add some video or just make a simple video marketing. Yeah. Well, I mean, a lot piece. of it depends on the platform that you're putting it on. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's some general best practices, but um, most like if it's for your website, obviously it can be, you know, more, it can be a longer video. It mm -hmm. can be potentially more cinematic and just for people to look through your images. But if you are specifically making a video for social media, mm -hmm. 
There's a lot of things to consider. And, and one of them, I think one of the most important ones is to remember that 85% of people who are looking at Facebook are doing it on their mobile device. Right. Yep. And 100% of people, you can only look, well, I mean, you can look at Instagram on your desktop, but who does that? No, so something happen. like Instagram is, you know, 100% right. on your mobile. So always remember that you need to optimize for mobile. And part of that from our perspective was coming up with the square videos because the landscape videos, you either had to turn your phone mm -hmm. or they were small. Right. So when we came out with the square videos, I think it was 78% more real estate you got on the screen. Right. Right. So square videos are great for that. And so of those 85% of people who are watching it on their mobile, 85% of them are watching it with no sound. Interesting. And okay. you, you would admit to that, right? Yeah, How the, often are you sitting I there? I have and, today. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're, we're all sitting in the back of a class yeah, or at the doctor's surgery. And, you know, if you right. turn the sound on, everyone stares at you. Right, right, right. You don't want to be the idiot that, that, who has a phone that's making noise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's important to tell your story with words mm. as well as your, you know, to actually part of that thumb stopping that you were talking about right. in the news feed yeah. is to make A, the first... Um, image that you put up or a video clip that you put up very strong right. so always put the best at the front draw them in and then put the, the text on it to help tell the story of what you're trying okay. to sell or what There's you're trying the to say of text that yes. you were that you were mentioning yes. earlier yeah okay yeah so i wondered the, why and now yeah, i totally get it that makes sense yeah i mean and you'll notice too if you see a photographer post something a video on facebook and there is no words on it you kind of you feel like you may be watching a slideshow right but if you start to tell a story with the words mm -hmm. as well and that can be i mean storytelling is also now an aspect on social media um that you, it's better to tell a story to draw your uh, audience in than to try and sell to them mm -hmm. people want to hear stories mm -hmm. especially on facebook I mean, what we're sharing, and that's the other part, is that the best way to actually market through video on social media is when people share it. Mm -hmm. And no one shares ads. Right. They share stories. Okay. So you, you need, I mean, someone, if we, we've got Sue's audience here, so I'll use them as an example. You know, you tell the story of Teresa who just came in for a shoot. She's a mom with three kids. She doesn't get much time to herself. And today we made her look beautiful, oh, feel beautiful. Yeah. And at the end, the CTA can just be, when was the last time you got photographed? Mm -hmm. So it's something that people are more likely to share than book a session, 10% off for the next three weeks kind right. of thing. You know? Right, like the, the, the traditional call to action yeah. incentive type of thing. It's, yeah. It's, yeah, more story-based, but essentially your, your, your goal is similar. You're just using a different tactic, so yeah. to speak. Yeah. What do you, what do you say to people that have... What do you say to people that think I, I can't do this? That's that's out of my league. That's that sounds too difficult for me. I will tell them outright they're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Put it this way, my dad is seventy two. Yeah. And he makes these for yeah. his rotary club. Yeah. And if my seventy two year old father can do it, um, I think anyone can do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, he's he's learned how to use the computer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but he, yeah, it's super easy. And and with the marketing videos, I mean, some people know Animoto as the slideshow videos, mm -hmm. um, but the marketing videos is actually a whole new product which exists now. They're shorter. They they're shorter, and that's I mean, again, right? it's it's for social media because right. people don't really sit on Facebook or Instagram and watch a long video. Right. They do on YouTube. Right. And you can create you know longer videos if you want to put them on YouTube. But even still, I think the um, optimum length for YouTube is somewhere between two to ten minutes. Yeah, it's not very long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, they are shorter, but it's also like a drag and drop thing. So you upload all your photos into what we have a media tray and just drag them into yeah. the dashboard and. And add your text. It's super easy. It is. Um, and it's, we've also made some what we call pre built storyboards, yeah. which are like templates. So we've already made a video. And if you like what we've done, you can open it up and just replace the existing photos and text with your own. Right. And that's like a starting point where you can get started right. to make any kind of marketing video there. I, I've, I've done it many times. Yeah. It is amazing. Um, what what other tips and tricks like what 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 other things do you have to say to people um, who are interested in creating these? Um, I think a lot of it is just to be authentic. 
yeah. to be um, eye-catching. And yeah. again, to think of that word thumb-stopping and also to think of the word shareworthy, mm-hmm. you know, and, and not to treat these platforms as a billboard. You, um, you, you put them up there and you look, you need to get engagement. And especially, you know, I've mentioned the Facebook algorithm. Well, it's recent, most recent change was the big one where he said, I'm going to put all your friends and family on your news feed and not businesses and news. Right, right. So, you know, a whole heap of businesses went, <gasps> Yeah. But that just means one of two things. Again, you make it something that people will share. You right. become their friend and family. Right. And if you find it difficult to do that, because it's not easy for every business to do that. I think photography is easier than other businesses because mm-hmm. we are telling stories with photographs. So if you can, you know, put that into a marketing video, I think it can be very powerful. Getting shares is like the ultimate goal, isn't it? Getting shares is. You can get likes and loves and wows and all of that. Yeah. And even comments are great. Yes. But a share. Yeah. That's a big deal. That means that you get in front of even more people again. Right. Yeah. Right. So shares are the goal. But, you know, it's it's even if you're finding it difficult still to get into the feed as a page because mm-hmm. of this algorithm change, yeah. I highly encourage people to boost a post yeah. or to do to use Ads Manager and do an ad. Mm-hmm. Uh, the power of that, boosting is easier. Ads Manager can get a bit daunting because there's so many sort of things there to choose from. So if no one's ever done it before, start with a boost. Uh, you can still pick your target audience. You can literally target people just in your zip code. Right. Um, you know, single mums if they're the ones you're targeting or married people or engaged people if that's what you want. Um, and it doesn't have to be a big spend, you know. Like you can start with $20. It right. just means that you are starting to play the game with Facebook. Well, and don't you – I mean, so I hear what you're saying and I, I totally agree actually – but haven't you heard people start complaining about, oh, now we have to pay Facebook to do this, that, or the other thing? Well, this is marketing. Mm-hmm. This is marketing in 2018 well, and okay. and for the foreseeable future, right? Mm-hmm. And TV ads were never free. Right. <laughs> ads in newspapers right. or magazines right. were never free. Right. And and you never had the option to pay $20 for no. a TV ad. And you also never had the option to specifically target only yeah. the people who want to see what you're yeah. you're actually putting out there. Yeah. So, I mean, from my perspective, $20 is nothing to pay for that. And give it a shot. And again, it's called marketing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, right. you know, you, there is certain types of free marketing that is fabulous. Right. But if you – and go even further, spend $100 on it mm-hmm. because that's when it really becomes powerful. Yeah. And if you're serious about getting people to walk in your door yeah. and come to your website and book you for a session, you've just got to – You've got to do that. And you can do some great tests. You can A-B test audiences. Yeah. You can test the way you do your video, a different photo at the start of each one. And can you go into the A-B testing different audiences a little bit deeper? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, that's just something you can set up in Ads Manager. Uh-huh. And you might think our target audience is people of this age in this suburb and, right. you know, who are earning this much money. Mm-hmm. And if you find your ad's not performing then you can actually then put that ad up against a different ad with a different demographic Mm -hmm. and see which performs better and each time you can tweak it you know whichever one wins and they'll give you all of those insights maybe test again yeah so and this is again where you know you might be paying facebook but you're getting all this data back right and you know i know from all of my time working in studios um Marketing to us was putting a pretty picture up there. Yeah. And generally it was the picture we liked the best. Right. And so, you know, the, the insights that you can learn right. from Facebook. You can Facebook, find what your clients like the best. Exactly. Which is what matters. Yeah. I, I had um, I was talking to a newborn photographer. And again, this is the power of what you've got in Ads Manager. She was telling me she schedules her ads to go up between midnight and 6 a.m. Because that's when all the moms because are breastfeeding. That's when the moms are breastfeeding and they're scrolling through. Yep. And and that's when she got the best traction was to actually schedule them at that time of Unbelievable. night. Unbelievable. And that's From her when targeted uh-huh. base. Like that's who she wants to yep. see her stuff. And that's where she got the most people seeing. Right. And here's the other thing that where it the again the power of ads manager lies. You can choose what you want your ad to do. So if you, you can say video views, engagement, conversion, leads mm-hmm. or clicks, I think. Mm-hmm. And so if you just want people to look at your, your video, you pick video views, you might get, they're cheaper. 
you know, you'll, you might get thousands right, of them. Right. But they're only going to put it in front of people who just view a video. Right. So don't expect those people to click through to your website. Okay. Okay. If you want clicks, you've got to choose that your objective is for clicks. Is to get clicks. Because mm. they put it in front of the people who are more likely to click. Interesting. And similarly with conversion and leads, like they know our behavior. Right. Whether we <laughs> like it or not. Scary as it It's sounds. a done deal, man. <laughs> Every time we get on that page, right, right. someone knows what we're doing. Right. <laughs> right. And Forever. The, the reason they do that is to share that with businesses. Right. 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 <laughs> and Which you is know, how they make money. This is how it works, folks. Yeah. But it's also how, I mean, it's not just them making money. There's businesses making money. Oh, this. yeah. Well, and that's my point, really. Like you... As even just a small business owner, just a, a, a photographer that's doing a few sessions here and there, you can really create a win, win, win situation mm -hmm. here for, and um, for, for it, at least at the beginning, not a lot of money to yes. just jump in, dip your toe in the pool, yeah. see what it's like, give it a shot, do some A-B testing and then do it again and go from there and see what happens. You might be really surprised. Yeah. And, and there's, I mean, there's lots of little things too. I wouldn't just do it once. Right. Like some people go, oh, I did that once and it didn't work. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> we had uh, our product team did what we called an empathy challenge mm -hmm. where they made, they decided that every weekday for 30 days, they would make a video, like put themselves in the, in the shoes of a business owner yeah. and make a video to post on social media five days a week for four weeks. Empathy challenge. I like it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what I found from that is some of these people that I work with who I followed on Facebook, but they were never in my feed, right. suddenly I was seeing all these videos from Stevie because right. he was posting a video every right. day. And so that can have an impact even purely doing that. Sure. Um, but also, you know, people are like, oh, this whole thing with the Facebook algorithm and, and the political stuff going on with Facebook. Yeah, right. You know, an organic reach has dropped. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the numbers show that, mm -hmm. you know, is Facebook really the platform to be on? And you can test that out too. I mean, I'm a, f I'm a follower of Instagram mm -hmm. and right now I think Instagram stories is That's the next at. thing. That's where it's at. Isn't yeah. It? The power yeah. of Instagram stories. Yeah. For me, I'm not, I, because I've worked in marketing, I'm not a clicker. Right. I'm not a buyer because I'm like, That's what you want me to do. I'm not doing that. I understand. But Instagram stories is the one thing where I'll swipe up or I'll click to learn more. And so as a business, if you don't have 10,000 followers, you can't do the swipe up. Right. Um, or as an account. But right. if you can't, again, I would strongly urge to put some money behind it so you can at least learn more, put mm -hmm. the learn more there and click through to your web page. Right. Um, but yeah, if, if you're not a believer in Facebook or you don't like Facebook or you don't want to give Zuck your money, <laughs> I mean, although Instagram's you're, you're still gonna give your, You're going to give him your money either way. <laughs> but yeah, I do think that Instagram is very powerful That as billion well. dollars was a bargain. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Was it ever? Yeah. Hey, so why, let me ask you this, thinking about what you're saying. Why do I, I do click on Instagram stories without any trouble whatsoever. I don't. Click on Facebook stories. Yeah. I don't do it. Yeah. I see them. There they are. I have no interest. Yeah. Sometimes it's the same people. Yep. I have no idea why. I think it's because we have different expectations from each platform. And Instagram did it first. Yeah. And it's kind of like, I don't know about you, but I really haven't been watching IGTV. I haven't either. Why is that? So here's the thing. That's YouTube. YouTube. It is, and I watch YouTube all the time. YouTube do long form videos. If someone else oh, comes out and wants gosh. to do them, it doesn't work. That's Instagram so does weird. Instagram stories. Facebook try to do them, it doesn't work. Snapchat, I mean, Instagram did the filters that Snapchat had. Yeah. I know I never use them. Yeah. But some people do. Right. But I think whoever, like, for the reputation that you're known for on that platform is where it's going to work. Interesting. From my perspective. With that said, I do think the benefit of Facebook stories is that it shows up at the top of the news feed and it's quite a big thumbnail. So you yeah. will get seen. Right. Whether anyone clicks on it or not, I don't know. But Right. <laughs> right. Well, and, that, but, and that's what's important, really. Yeah. Um, anything else in closing? Any, any last minute advice? My advice would be to, just like Nike, just do it. Right. Like you, you give can it a shot. Give it, give really? it every excuse why it won't work that you want to, and it won't work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you tell yourself it's not going to work, yeah, and you don't do it, it's 
it's not going to work. Yeah. I mean, one of my favorite sayings is what you see depends mostly upon what you look for. Yeah. So if you really think it's not going to work, it probably right. won't work. It won't. Right. But if you, if you have that, you know, if you look at the stats, if you look at the direction where people are spending most of their time. Yeah. And you want to be in front of them. Mm -hmm. uh, I suggest that, you know, you, you start doing that. And again, you can put a photo on any of these platforms, um, but the video is favored. And all of these things that we've talked about will help just push it that little bit further. Right. And I just, you know, I, I encourage people to, it is easy with Animoto. Right. Um, that's the one I asked like 50 photographers one day, what's the first word they thought of when they thought of Animoto? And, and it was easy. Mm hmm so we do make it easy. It's not time consuming. Right. Um, put aside 15 minutes a day and make a video. Truly. And, you know, sometimes it's just a little tweak or you can create your own template of a video and just switch out. I, I right. mean, I would. I've been telling the girls downstairs, every time you do a shoot, post it. Mm -hmm. And post something about different about each woman. Yeah. Because... If you're posting three of those a week and people are seeing not just the same ad popping up, but different right. things coming up of yeah. different women. It's unique every time. It is. Yeah. And, you know, so I think it's really important just to put yourself out there mm -hmm. and, and not to be afraid for any reason. Yeah, I like Stop that. making any excuses. I like, like that. Like time, difficulty, all of that stuff doesn't count. Right. And right. so I think I just employ everybody to go out there and do it. That's great advice. Yeah. Thank you for your time today. Thank you. I appreciate it. I've this. enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, have a safe trip back to New York City. Thank you. See you next time. Bye. Bye.